Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Andrew Turner, founder and host of the GT Sessions podcast. And today we have two amazing guests, not just one, but two. And this is going to be a special edition of the GT Sessions uh, after, I, I, after I kind of miraculously did a, a many, many hundreds of mile drive down to the lovely beaches of Cornwall a while, about, about uh, six to eight weeks ago um, to try and get on a boat a boat party on a Friday night. It only took me 12 hours to get there. But actually out the back of it, suddenly we're now involved in some kind of in interesting events. So welcome, Nikki, and welcome, Johnny. Thank you. Good Thank you. you. And um, the reason we're getting together today on today's office is because actually um, the, the great thing is about, is about, you know, we talk about on the GNT, so we talk about founders, we talk about, you know, growth and technology with gifted and talented people. So we've got some great people on today's show. Um, and for people that don't know you, Nikki and Johnny, could you just maybe explain, just introduce yourself and we can get into the, the meat and two veg of the episode and why we're here today. Yeah, so my name is Nikki Davies. I'm the director of Sofa Cornwall and we're a not-for-profit membership organization that serves the tech, digital and software community in Cornwall. And we do everything from run events like Agile on the Beach, as Andrew knows, um, which includes an epic boat party, um, all the way down to running work experiences for local children so they can understand what it's like to work in a tech company. Um, and a lot of this all comes down to us plugging the talent gap in Cornwall and helping local tech companies recruit. Um, so we very much like to grow our own. Um, and we are running the first Startup Cornwall event powered by Slash in Cornwall. Um, I'm really excited to, to be bringing it to Newquay on the 14th of September. Cool. Um, I'm Johnny Clark. I'm a, a Liverpoolian, and uh, I've done a lot of work in our tech sector up here. The first part of my career was spent in economic development, um, and this latter half has been uh, working more hands-on with tech companies, so building my own tech business, investing in other tech companies, doing a lot of work with um, entrepreneurs, and in particular, um, I specialise in working with founders who come from uh, non-commercial backgrounds, so you know, uh, nurses, teachers people who don't have, uh, you know, a corporate or, or traditional business experience. Um, right now, um, a, a lot of my focus is on uh, a lot of the programs and I'm um, a consultant in delivering, uh, supporting my portfolio companies that I've angel invested in uh, and working with some other partners on some, um, some not yet public behind the scenes work that's really cool. But the big thing that I'm talking a lot about at the minute is uh, Liverpool Slush. So I'm the um, organizer of Liverpool Slush and, uh, you know, much, much like Nikki, looking to put on uh, an event, uh, a landmark business event in um, in Liverpool that leverages that brand and is a kind of a North Star event for founders, investors, and other people engaged in the startup ecosystem across the Northwest and beyond. Cool. So, you know, so before we came on the episode, I mean, we, we talked about, you know, some analogies of, of um, great dual center events. So, you know, this is kind of like the either, this is like the, is this a tech founder like Live Aid um, <laughs> equivalent? So we're not we're not in Philadelphia and London. We're in um, New Key and Liverpool. Is that right? I think that's the kind of the summary from that point of view. I mean, there's no better place to be if you're a budding entrepreneur or a visionary. <laughs> New Key and Liverpool are the places. But yeah, I mean, Johnny, your analogy of the fact that actually it's, it's almost like the uh, slushed is the TEDx to TEDs flagship events um i think summed it up perfectly and that's certainly what we tell everybody here as well um to have that slushed community event which i think they did 15 last year 25 years this year but they their ambition is to reach 100 local communities um in the next few years um to bring that slush branding outside of helsinki um and to support those local communities is really really important yeah yeah i mean it's, it's interesting it's interesting the the the, the branding slush is there, is there a particular background to that? I mean, is there, could you, maybe you could explain that, Johnny. Do you, do you know what that is? I mean, I mean, when I said has slushed, I thought, is this slush puppy, that famous like high sugar drink that we all used to drink when we were kids? Or is yeah, it actually it's, something it's, else? Goodness knows what the health implications of that were. Um, I think slush refers to the fact that they, um, the, you know, the, the, the main event in Helsinki we hold every year around the end of November. And that is around the time that the winter snow begins to really bed in. Um, mm. I'd never experienced anything so cold in my life as when I went there last year. I mean, I thought I was pretty well prepared with, you know, uh, my, my winter wardrobe. But now I, um, I was having to 
dip into different coffee shops on the way to the train station just to try and avoid hypothermia. So I'm a bit I'm gonna be a bit more prepared when I go back over there this year for um, 2023's Swoosh Conference. Oh I see. So what so what you're saying, yeah, there's an annual event for tech founders, which is kind of like this is the slush the slushed version the slush version without the D. And then the, they've had the apostrophe D at the end for the kind of more international events outside Helsinki, Finland. Yeah, that, that, that's exactly it. I mean, I use the analogy. Uh, it's a little bit like what TEDx is to TED. Mm. Um, no, no, no copyright infringement or anything intended there in case anyone picks up on that. But that's that's how it works in my head. You know, Slush is, a, is the brand. That, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best tech conference on the planet. It's the largest meeting of venture, capital startup, uh, venture capitalists um, and, and hybrid of startups um, on this continent, that's for sure. And... Uh, you know, they fill uh, the Mesokeskus, I think is how you pronounce it. It's a massive exhibition center just outside mm. Helsinki. They mm. fill that every year and they don't, you know, they, they, they cap the tickets and the experience is absolutely incredible. It's not like any other conference or business event I've ever been to. And really, I, they, uh, I, as far as I'm aware, the, the backstory to Slushed and these kind of smaller partner community events in other locations is about trying to sort of bottle a little bit of the magic that they have at that main event in Helsinki every year. And use that to sort of fertilize ecosystems elsewhere that are what you would call in economic development terms, emergent ecosystems. You know, we're not quite where Helsinki is. We, we don't quite have that level of um, investment, cohesion, the raw numbers of high growth startups and things like that. But using this kind of big event led, collaborative, cohesive economic development model for tech, those are some of the benefits that we think we can unlock further down the line. And, you know, Liverpool and Cornwall um, join locations such as Leuven, Busan, Dar es Salaam, uh, and many other exciting places all over the, the world in hosting these um, community-driven events. So how, how did that start then? Did, did you did you jointly apply for it? You know, it was like a dual centre, or was it just that you applied separately and then it, it kind of came together as a, as a kind of a, a marriage? I can offer some uh, insight on this. So essentially you have to pitch to bring a slash event to your local community. I'm just being around because my connection's not great. Um, and Johnny obviously pitched, we pitched as well. And interesting enough, we didn't get it. Um, we went into the feedback session very much like, actually, I think we really need to change their mind and, and prove to them why Cornwall needs this. Because as we know, actually, it's about helping, helping struggling local communities. And the hmm. feedback was great. We were down to pretty much the last one and, and Liverpool pitched us at the post. And then actually said, we said, well, Liverpool are on the West Coast. They've been the recipient of a lot of EU funding that's now come to an end. Actually, our pain points are really, really similar. Maybe we could do a twinning event. Um, and the team at Slush put us in touch with Johnny, who very kindly is all for collaboration and said, yeah, do you know what? Actually, let's do this because we can impact two local communities. We can help more startups. We can get more visibility. And let's bring this together, uh, bring this to the UK for the very first time with a bang. And so that's what we've done. So we've essentially been collaborating and sort of meeting weekly to kind of share notes and everything else. But the two events mm. are independent based on the needs of their local communities and the, and the tech yeah. clusters here. That's very, that's very charitable of you, uh, Johnny. Well, you sharing know, the first place. I, I, like Nikki said, I am for collaboration. I, and there are massive synergies between um, parts of Cornwall and, and the Northwest, not, not just that we're both on the coast. Um, you know, face not towards America. Um, I think you you win on the weather front slightly, although neither of us are comparable to say that. You know, the you could create like song. you could create like a kind of a, you know like they do in Paris. You know, during the summer, you could create like a, you could get a bit of sand and you could like create something mm -hmm. down by the docks. You know, but create like a like a little let San Tropez within within docks. You know, down in down by the docks. What about that? By you the know, little, by the library building. Place uh, and property has never been my forte when it comes to economic development, so I leave that <laughs> to the professionals. But what, but what I do like is, you know, um, with my economic development hat on from, from my former life, um, the UK is a small place and, um, you know, you frequently see things that kind of segregate or break up Liverpool City region, Greater Manchester, Leeds City mm -hmm. region, Sheffield City, you know, um, when in reality, you know, overlay a map of the new Elizabeth line that the London Underground has just received. That that would stretch from Liverpool to almost Leeds. Um, and if you look at the functional economic is it areas, that, is it that, in, I didn't know. I didn't realise that. Is that right? Is it's the same. It's, it's, it's the yeah, same it's ab Absolutely enormous. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So next time somebody tells you that they don't have money to electrify the trains up north or give us nice trains, you can you can tell them that. But if you look at if you look at the geography of Silicon Valley, right? Every mm. politician says we're going to build the new Silicon Valley right here in 
you know, Scunthorpe. I, um, you know, if, if you look at the area that encompasses you know, the Bay Area from San Francisco itself down to Mountain View and beyond, yeah. that's a huge geography. That is a very mm. large geography. Correct, with, yeah. You know, and so we need to start thinking about doing things at a much bigger scale in the UK and including more regions that are not what typical cities or, or well connected. And I, and I think that is another massive kind of underestimated synergy between Cornwall and Liverpool. What you're saying, Johnny, is that we need to be the new Silicon Beach. We should have a tunnel. We should just cut out. We'll, we'll go under Wales. We'll, have well a you know, no, I mean, the thing, the thing is, you see, Johnny needs to build a beach first. At least you've got some beaches. And I, and I put on, as I put, I put on LinkedIn, as, as Nikki knows, uh, you know, the, well, as you probably know anyway, Johnny, that obviously the, the alleged real, real Silicon Beach is, is, is Tel Aviv, Israel, right? But obviously, I've got quite a few friends over in Tel Aviv, so I did actually post it to them the other day. We put it out that actually the real Silicon Beach is obviously now moved to moved to Cornwall, down to down to um, Newquay. I, I obviously I, hadn't, I haven't had any feedback communication from my friends in Tel Aviv yet, but it's, it's been a stony silence. But you know, we'll see. Well, silence is deafening. So what, what's the, yeah? What's the, what? So what's the? So you've got this. You've got this event that's coming up in September. It's Thursday the fourteenth. What I know, there's been a lot of activity in the last. You know, everybody's been running around and getting things together. Um, what, what's the kind of format of the day, and what, what what's the kind of plan in, in Liverpool and and, and Newquay? Um, sure. So with the <laughs> Liverpool event, you know, um, it's the first event we've had really since before COVID, where we've had the entire, you know, a large contingent of the tech community in a, in one room for one day. Um, we're very fortunate to have an area called the Baltic Triangle, which is called be that because of um, when the ports and docks are much more extensive in Liverpool, this sort of mm. southern portion, south from the Albert Dock, um, facilitated a lot of trade to uh, you know, the, the Baltic regions, Estonia, etc., via via Scandinavia. Um, yeah. And as a result, we've got a lot of warehouses that make great event spaces. So um, whilst we're not doing an, an illegal warehouse rave, uh, although that might be part of what we're doing later in the day, um, it is a great place to get, it is a superb um, set of venues to get um, people in a room for a conference. Um, and I've tried to create an agenda, uh, and I'm sure Nikki knows, and anyone who does events knows, um, it's not easy. I'm actually today, um, as of this morning, just battling with a couple of uh, speakers who've told me they're unable to make it, which is not quite, um, you know. Surely not. Moment. How could well, they turn you down, Johnny? I know, I know. How dare they have uh, bigger fists to fry, uh, keeping their massive companies afloat? But um, you know, these these things happen. But on on the whole, um, I've tried to facilitate an agenda which dives into all the things that I believe are important um, and useful in growing a tech startup. So we have sessions on raising pre seed and seed. We have sessions um, about product development and technology. We have sessions um, about deep tech and spin ups and commercialization, um, which is particularly important given that we're a large student university city with mm. um, a research intensive institution such as the University of Liverpool. So um, there's something in there for everyone. And, um, you know, in true Liverpool style, we do end the day as well. We've got drinks and dancing um, from half six until late. Um, here to see my friend, Dan Chandler, who's a, a really uh, well respected DJ locally and has done a lot of, uh, lot of clubs all over the world in Ibiza. So, um, yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, I, I've tried to balance it so that there is genuinely useful stuff in there for people. They get a lot out of it, but also it's a fun occasion. I thought, you're gonna, I thought you're going to say you're going to say you're going to all going to sing "You'll Never Walk Alone" or something at the end. But obviously, for the blues in the city, they won't they won't sing, will they? I suppose that's the problem. Uh, I mean, they've got nothing to sing about, do they? So oh, here we go. Oh, Ben, <laughs> yeah. that's vicious, vicious. Okay. I'm not going to tell you what football team I support, but anyway, that's moving swiftly on. Um, so, what's happening in, in down in down in uh, lovely Newquay? I mean, I know if you, you you're going to be in a warehouse in in Liverpool, we obviously struck rave kind of location, and then obviously down in 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 Newquay, we're going to have a nightclub, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, so we're in um, in Sailors Nightclub in Newquay, which has just had a 1.3 million pound makeover. Um, and as Johnny knows, Slush Ooh. is very much about the lights. It's very dark. It's very wintry, and they've spent about 300 grand on lighting and, and digital toys, uh, which they, funnily enough, won't let us play with. But they are bringing in an engineer to handle it for for us. Um, but it has a really great space. So not only is it a multi um, multi tier venue, it's got a huge terrace out the back that looks over the beach. So it's one of the best views in Newquay. 
So we're starting the day with a pitch competition. So we've got three judges, uh, one VC and two angels that are going to um, judge the pitches. We had about 40 submissions. They've got to get, get it down to about nine. Um, so I've got a panel working on that at the moment um, and trying to whittle those down. That's going to be sort of the first couple of hours in the morning. And then our keynote kicks off from about half 11. And it's very much the, the talks throughout the day follow key points within the startup journey. So uh, rather than sort of focusing on one particular type of tech, we're focusing on people and culture, um, market validation, market testing, uh, fundraising, growth hacking, but also hearing other sides of the coin, not just the typical startup story. So yes, we may have had somebody exited, but there are also other ways to grow a business. So you can just make sales and grow a sustainable company that actually you might want to stay in because we live in Cornwall and Cust we have customer a lot of people create Customer funded. Customer funded. A Indeed. Um, so we have you know, companies down here that live, people live here because actually they've got a great lifestyle and they want to create a really great place to work where you can be on the beach at five o'clock and not sort of burning the midnight oil. Um, but also, you know, things like employee owned companies, there are other ways to, to create a sustainable business. Um, and so just telling multiple sides of the coin um, is something we really want to help focus on, particularly as we've seen investment dip um, and it's challenging to get investment in Cornwall because we really, really are on the edge not a lot of people passing the door around here. Um, so to, you know, to, to actually attract investment, we have to make an awful lot of noise or we have to travel and that's not very sustainable. So, you know, it's showing that there are other ways and um, you can grow without investment, but you know, that is just one way of fundraising. And then as uh, Johnny's touched on, mm. there is an after party. So we'll be heading out to the terrace to barbecue and then back in because we are in a nightclub. Um, and they have closed their official club night for us that night so we can bring in our own DJ and basically stay till oh, late. Sweet. Yeah, so uh, they've given us the whole place. <laughs> so um, are we going are we are we going to fly it we're going to fly the DJ down from Liverpool to um to to Newquay, a bit like a Phil Collins kind of thing from Live Aid, you know when he flew over and did the played the drums. Is it something a bit like yeah, that? We're going to have full Maybe radio festival that. just have the same lineup. <laughs> it's just not very sustainable. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's no, so cool. That's cool. I mean, I mean, it's, it's 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 a really it's a really interesting format. It's a really interesting format, isn't it? It's it's um, it's. I mean, and this is the first. Just for clarity, this is the first time that Slush has come to the UK, full stop. It's just been it's a worldwide first kind of thing, or a UK first. Is that right? Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a UK first. Um, I think they've done a couple of years of these more smaller community driven events now. Um, I think I saw a couple last year. So you know, Aarhus in, in Denmark, Heilbronn mm. in Germany done it but um yeah it's really exciting to be to be bringing it to the uk and you know it was one of them things when i heard about it something just really struck me that there are similarities uh and, and the mission statement of of slushed um resonated with me as, as applicable to what we're trying to do in Liverpool. and what what would you i mean we so i mean i'm not i'm not being facetious here but what what would you call liverpool now is it like silicon docks i mean how do you call it so i don't know silicon well, you know, I'm a, I'm a big believer that uh, I wouldn't have a name like that. I think uh, that, you know, the something of somewhere often becomes the nothing of nowhere, as um, many investors say. And, you know, I, I'm very passionate That's about... That's very philosophical, philosophical there, Johnny. I'm, I'm a very philosophical person sometimes. Um, I'm, I'm a big believer that Liverpool needs to forge a new identity, um, mm. as do a lot of the post-industrial northern cities, right? Um, we've been through a lot of economic hardship over the past 50, 60 years. Um, that has been compounded by other external factors, which I'm sure people can imagine. Mm. Uh, and I think it's really important that, you know, we're in the 21st century now, and the cities, I'm not saying everywhere suddenly needs to put all their money into seed funds and startups, but, but mm. places that fail to at least make themselves reasonably attractive to digital nomads, young, mm. hungry entrepreneurs, and new businesses that are exploiting technology, will increasingly find themselves left behind in the global kind of uh, technological arms race that we're in, whether we like it or not, um, mm. you know. And, and, you know, as somebody, I, like a lot of scousers, like I love the city, I want it to do well. I, I, I don't like it when I see the city put down. And I, me personally, I want people to think that Liverpool is more than Beatles and football and, and, and um, you know, big parties. Your, your vision's brilliant. We do culture amazingly well. Um, and, and I know Liverpool can, is a great place to live, etc. Um, people wouldn't say, they wouldn't typically think of it as a tech city. Mm. But I'm here every day and I walk around it every day. And I, I speak to the entrepreneurs and tech founders and investors here every day. And I know 
that it is an emerging tech city. Is it, is it a particular, I mean, because you know, obviously tech's got quite a few different sub sub segments. Would you say there's particular segments that are getting most traction or interest the, or kind of the, like developing faster? There are, and, and Mike, you know, I, I don't like the public sector's fascination with categorization and, 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 and clusters and strategies and, you know, because they just all end up gathering dust, right? Okay, I'll just, re I'll just retract that question. <laughs> no, no, we're good at, we're very good. We have standouts in, we have a lot of standouts in health and life sciences. <laughs> impact okay. technology, using technology to achieve social good and um, mm -hmm. elevate people out of socioeconomic hardship. Mm -hmm. um, and we have some real um, breakthrough ed tech companies and a lot of B2B SaaS as well. But, you know, don't, don't, at, at the end of the day, it's the people that make the businesses great and, and their ideas and creativity. And if there's one thing that I know Scouts have, it's creativity. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, the reason I was asking was because obviously what you find, I've I found in my travels from Silicon Valley to, you know, sit Australia and Singapore and stuff like that, is that sometimes the geographic talent, like, you know, orientates towards a certain type of sub-segment. So you get these kind of like uh, specialization centers. So, but it sounds like you've got quite a, quite a broadening number of different areas that people are, um, are kind of embracing, which is great. There's actually a, a couple of... Um, I was looking on your background, actually, Johnny. There's a couple of companies I think you've invested in, so U-Hubs and uh, Kineco. Uh, so I've had both founders from those companies on my podcast as well, so Ash Alley and, and also uh, Gary as well. So uh, interesting. It's a small world. It certainly is. Anyway, just on, switching back to Nikki, I mean, in terms of Startup Cornwall and uh, Software Cornwall, what would be, if I was asking the same question, what are the kind of areas that you're seeing getting the most traction or interest or people put in their investment in, in Cornwall? Any particular nuance or is it is it across the board? A um, bit of both. So um, we obviously have a spaceport. So there's a space cluster building here. Um, we may have seen that was launched last year, which is really, really exciting for the Southwest. Um, and that has helped kickstart a number of quite deep tech companies um, and a lot of sort of satellite um, based companies that are doing a lot of pro problem solving for the space class, uh, space sector themselves. So that's all based around Newquay Airport and there's a little hub building there. But also given our geography, um, we have a huge oh, cool. green cluster. Um, and Cornwall, by the nature of the fact that we are, you know, we have great weather and we have a lot of water, hopefully a lot of sun, but also a lot of rain. Um, there's a lot around sustainability and clean tech. Um, and I think just by nature, we've right. got the biggest cluster of B Corp companies in the country because people live here, want to protect the local environment. Um, and not all of them are in tech, mm. a couple of them are. Um, there's a few in sort of media, some in digital, some in software as well. Um, but then there's others in sort of cosmetics and products. Uh, and that's something I think Cornwall's really proud of and something that we perhaps you know, don't shout about enough. Um, everyone sees Cornwall as beaches and pasties because that's what they come here on holiday for. And those sort of hospitality, typical front end jobs are six weeks of the year when actually hospitality even though everyone sort of discounts it as a sector you need somebody to run the back-end engine to look after multiple accommodation or booking systems e-commerce all those sorts of things you know we have a lot of retailers around here that are ultimately un underpinned by really good software and so there is a big software cluster mm. here and um, that is sort of supporting that ecosystem and even at software Cornwall, we, rep we represent re represent around 80 member companies um but we don't have uh the the scale of companies so we don't have businesses that employ thousands and thousands of people here and so most of our membership are sort of very right. small to medium i'd say they you know some of the medium-sized one are sort of 15 to 20 people and so often they are the companies mm. that employ one person called operations who are the only non-billable staff and they do everything <laughs> and then the rest are sort of tech mm. staff so that can be really like an, to like an octopus innovate. yeah yeah, exactly. Um, so it makes innovation a bit challenging. However, we are built on a history of innovation because of our mining. You know, a bit like Johnny says, with tech, you walk out the door, there's a mine shaft. You know, we are steeped in history of being able mm. to drill things and break things and 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 innovate. And that really does come through with the Cornish culture. Um, but people forget that there is a massive tech cluster here because we have a lot of people that want to live here. Um, and we are so commutable from London, Manchester, and Edinburgh now. Um, and even Portugal, you know, you can mm. be in Portugal within a couple of hours. And with our surf culture, it creates a real yeah. ideal scenario for those digital nomads and that purpose-driven um, sort of company culture. 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's really interesting. I mean, I, I agree with your, I think, the sentiment that I think you were saying a bit earlier, Johnny, about the whole, you know, like, you know, I was at London Tech Week the other, the other month and, you know, sat there in the audience when Rishi was on stage, Dishi Rishi. And, um, you know, then obviously it's, it becomes like the, over the three days, it became like a political pitch competition, you know, with each party being represented. And But then actually, what are they actually doing about the regions? You know, what are they doing outside London? Um, you know, I, I, I spent over 10 years in London and now I'm not in London anymore. And, um, you know, I think it's, uh, it's great what you're doing because you're actually, you know, putting these other locations on the map and how do you, you know, these kind of events that you're putting together, which is fantastic, is a way of amplifying the opportunity. You don't have to be in London to, to progress your great idea. And you, you know, you can attract talent to, it's not just about the work, it's actually the environment you create as well. So it's, um, it's all, all credit to you both of you to for, to push this forward, and I'm glad we could like you know glad we could get you on the show to talk about it. Um, well, I, I, I mean, in terms Johnny of actual fo fo follow, yeah, go on through. I was just going to say, just like Johnny alluded um, earlier, that innovation, creativity, and that culture of of doing things differently doesn't happen by accident. It takes somebody to actually mm. go and bring those people together to actually create an event to do something like this, and I've worked with a number of sort of startups yeah. and I've worked in incubators where they think if they build a building and plug a load of businesses in it that they'll just start talking and it doesn't work like that you have to have somebody or a team of people in that building saying right this coffee let's just talk you know I'm going to introduce you to this you have to have those super connectors otherwise it just doesn't work um yeah. you know you can't just put people in the place and expect you have to, innovation you have to work, work, work the room and work the corridors work the room and work the corridors yeah. and make the introductions and do a Johnny collaborate it makes such a difference when people just don't see comp competition but actually collaboration that is the key key lesson in all of this mm. yeah well no, I mean so I mean I wish you all the best I know that obviously I'm kind of part of the process for Startup Cornwall um, and I, I was actually going to say I didn't realize it was actually on the same day otherwise I, could, I would have I would have been <laughs> up in Liverpool on the Thursday and then come down to down to um to new key on the friday but if it's doing a dual center on the same day might be a bit of a, a tall order i think unless i do have a heli you know unless i can get the gnt sessions helicopter out of the uh out of the loft and Go you know put it back wrestling. together <laughs> oh yeah sorry yeah yeah i'll be in trouble with her won't i whatever that means <laughs> um anyway so, so um in terms of actually um you know sharing information what what was the best way to for anybody that's interested in attending or submitting, you know, getting involved in in a more proactive way. What what's the best way of learning more about um, the the event or uh, the events? Liverpool slash plural, plural. Yeah. Check our website out, uh, website and socials, liverpoolslushed.org. You can access all of our social channels, our agendas on there, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagrams in the top right corner of the website as well. Um, you can learn about our sponsors who've made our event possible. Um, we are now actually sold out of general admission tickets, but um, oh, really? I'm anticipating, oh, wow. yeah, there might be, uh, do check back on occasion, there is a wait list and um, there's, uh, if there's any refunds or we have any additional allocation mm. based on tinkering with the venue capacity and, you know, obviously we, do, we don't want to go anywhere near safety limits, but um, there might be some availability. So, keep so how many people have you, are you going to expecting to attend? Uh, during the daytime session, about 350, and then we'll be joined mm. by what looks to be an, an additional 200 to 300 um, for the evening only networking, um, right. which has been helped greatly by KPMG moving their northern tech drinks from, from uh, Manchester to Liverpool on this occasion. So that's been, uh, that'll be uh, good fun. Cool. So that's Liverpool, S L U S H D dot org. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. No apostrophe, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> what about what about the information regarding regarding new key? Anything you can share on that, Nikki? Yes. So uh, the web address startupcornwall.co.uk, and on all the relevant social media channels forward slash startupcornwall, we'll get you everything you need to know. Um, we've got a few tickets left. Um, so yeah, grab them because they are going very quickly. We expect to sell out at around three hundred people. So. Um, and we're announcing speakers over the course of this week and next week. And it's one of the best lineups I've seen for an event in Cornwall. So we're really, really excited. So start at cornwall.co.uk. Cool. Fantastic. Well, all I can say is thank you for coming on the show. Uh, thank you for coming on this special edition of the GNT Sessions podcast. And that was Nikki Davis from Startup Cornwall and Johnny Clark from Liverpool Slushed. 
Thanks and have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.